Watching my mother die has been the most difficult thing I've done in life thus far. Hands down, the most difficult thing I've done. You know, caring for her throughout the years that she was suffering with cancer and giving it her all, going through chemo and coming out of that like a champion, it was still such a difficult thing to watch. You know, I thought I would see my mother live to be in her 80s and her 90s, and I never saw such a hard-working, God-fearing, loving woman leaving this earth so soon. And mind you, like I said, she battled cancer, and she battled it head-on like the champion that she was. But she also left this world like a champion. Something that I always remember about my mother was how she made difficult things seem so easy. It's like even if she was bothered or perturbed or upset, she never took it out on me or my brother. She was that real super woman, that amazing mother that I believe everyone wants to have. I had that. And it was such a blessing to watch her, you know, as I grew and she grew. And she was my best friend. And so I lost her four years ago. And today I want to share with you what death taught me. Six things that death taught me four years later. The first thing that death taught me or grief taught me was if there is life, there will be death. Because as we live here on this earth, we are promised two things, life and death, nothing else. And we must accept that because we can't have life without death. Not yet. We don't live in a perfect world where there is life, there is death. And where there is death, there is life. The second thing grief taught me was I don't get to control when death happens. We don't get to control when death happens. And therefore, the goal of life should be to live in the present moment, to love on those who love on you and be grateful for the time that we have with them. Be grateful for what we have and not what we lack. Because at the end of the day, we don't get to control when death happens. We don't have that kind of power. I wish we did. I think things would be much different. By the way, I know they would be. But unfortunately, that power is not something that we have. Next, there is a creator. There's a creator, whether society wants to admit that or not. And we are really shown that during the most difficult times in our lives, especially death, watching a parent die, a sibling die, a child die, we are shown that there is a creator because their fate is out of our hands. The only thing we can do is pray and hope and wish and have faith. But at the end of the day, it's out of our hands. So there is a creator after all, We didn't create ourselves, right? And so I had to understand that I didn't create my mother. You know, I didn't create my mother's mother. And so that was something I had to accept. And because I didn't create her, I didn't own her. She gave birth to me, but I didn't physically create her. You know, we're energy, right? I didn't give her the energy that she had. The creator created her and therefore I didn't own her. And when the creator is ready to take back life, the creator will do so. That was something very hard to learn and accept. Yes, there's a creator that I know, but really having to understand that I'm living, but I'm really not in control of my life. That's hard for us to accept as human beings. The fourth thing that grief taught me was that it can be therapeutic 
when it's done with intention. And what I mean by that is crying and feeling and feeling our feelings and releasing them is good for the soul. It's good that we feel our grief because if we didn't, we'd be bypassing it. We try and stuff it down somewhere, push it under the rug and run from it. But eventually that grief comes back up. It resurfaces and it boils over. So feeling our feelings and crying and feeling the emotions, going through the emotions and then releasing them is a good thing. And I often call this a good grief because it allows us to accept the pain, understand it and in time, release it. It also minimizes, uh, I believe, our selfishness by allowing us to see the situation from multiple angles. Let me explain. The day before my mother found out she had a lump in her breast, we were out enjoying life. Mind you, I saw her every day and if I didn't see her, we were on the phone every day. And on Saturdays, we would often go out shopping or go out for lunch. She was my greatest friend. And just like that, she had to face something she never thought she would have to face. And she had to do it with grace. Eventually, she lost that battle. And I could have easily sat around blaming God for taking her from me. But I was reminded that I can't complain about losing something I didn't create. Instead, I had to remember my good times with her. Don't get me wrong, I'm human. I had some very human moments and thoughts. I was angry because I didn't really understand. Everything is going so good. You know, I'm, I'm finally doing this and she's doing this and she's ready to reach for those goals that she always wanted to go for. And we had all of these plans. And you take her now. We, we, we have this avalanche of reality hit us from out of nowhere. So I had some very human moments and thoughts of anger. I was upset. Yet when it was over, I found comfort in my mother's words. She said, I'm not afraid of death. And when I'm gone, I need you to keep living. Now, need is a very strong word. She didn't say she wanted me to keep living. She said she needed me to keep living because if I didn't, I would surely die. And she didn't mean a physical death. She meant a spiritual and emotional death. I would be, in essence, walking dead, appearing alive, but dead inside. And there's a lot of that going around. There's a lot of people walking the earth suffering with grief, and they have no idea how to release it. But my mother's words gave me comfort, and I want them to give you comfort too. And the fifth thing that grief taught me was we don't realize it, but most of the time when we've cared for an ill parent or sibling, a friend or a child, and they're on their deathbed, they've accepted their death long before we do. They accept their death long before we do. Even children Get this, even children, those who we feel are unaware of death, have already found comfort in their fate. They've accepted their death. We're the ones that have to catch up. We have to play catch up to make it to their level of knowing and understanding and embracing what they've already accepted. If I have life, I will have life death. They've already accepted that. We have to catch up to what they've already accepted. And the last thing that grief taught me four years later is that I believe the most pain we can give others in the afterlife is not moving on with our life after their life is over. Oh, that is so good. 
The most pain we can give others in the afterlife is not moving on with our life after their life is over. For the most part, when we lose a loved one, they don't want us to stay in a state of pain and anguish or despair. They don't want us to stay in a state of grief. After all, they're free and they want us to be free as well. So my friends, it's been four years since my mother's death, my best friend, and I went through a lot of emotions of anger and sadness and guilt and just all of the emotions, any emotion you can think of, I felt that emotion, but that's a part of the process. No one ever said that death would be easy. No one ever said life would be easy either. We just have to make the best of both. Take life one day at a time. And when death knocks on your front door, because eventually it will, that's something we have to come to terms with. Because as I said at the beginning of this video, where there is life, there is death. I'm praying for you. I love you. I'm rooting for you. If you are stuck in a state of grief, just know that you are not alone. But listen to this video over and over and over again, if you have to, until you're able to find freedom. My friends, I'm author Katie Gates, and this is the place where I help women like you and me become the best people that we can be. If that sounds like your thing, subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell, like this video, and leave me a comment. If you're suffering with grief, how are you handling it? If you've made it out of grief, leave some advice in the comment section for those going through grief. Again, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bye-bye.